improving stu student achievement stock. Start again. <laughs> yeah, there. Okay. Improving student achievement through increasing engagement and motivation. Uh, this is the Action Research Project by uh, Cynthia Sorensen, myself, Ms. Whitty, and Laura Yorch for our faculty advisor, Kristen Domingo. Our problem, unfortunately this didn't come up, our problem was underachieving students, low motivation level, and lack of engagement. Uh, most of the students in the survey had D's and F's or um, very low C's. And the purpose of our project was to study the motivation level of students to determine the impact of extrinsic motivation, which is uh, compensation, punishment, or reward and determine the impact of intrinsic motivation being autonomy, mastery, and purpose. The questions that we would like to answer are, in what ways do student motivation, student achievement and motivation affect academic achievement, and what is the impact of self-esteem on student progress? Our definitions include intrinsic motivation, uh, which is the behavior that's driven by internal rewards, and extrinsic motivation, behavior in order to receive something, a reward or a punishment. Dimensions of motivation are the types of influence that cause someone to do something. Confidence um, as the ability to do something. Autonomy, acting separately from others. Interest as something that a person enjoys or learning about. Uh, relatedness as a sense of belonging with the group. Interpersonal affiliation as involving relations between people closely connected with something. Uh, rigor as the state of being very exact or careful. Tangible rewards are rewards that are easily recognized or able to be touched and utilized. Inherent rewards uh, as a reward that is permanent or inseparable. Truth value validity is the authenticity of results that were recorded accurately. And applicability transferability is uh, the results of the research that can be applied in another environment. The literature review for our project, uh, the Center for Education Policy at George Washington University found that upwards of 40% of high school students are disengaged from learning, are interactive, inattentive, exert little effort on schoolwork, and report being bored in school. In relation to intrinsic motivation, the possibility exists for extrinsic motivators to have a negative effect, but there is no, there is room for both intrinsic and extrinsic rewards in a caring engagement, engaged classroom in which students respond productively to a variety of incentives. Intrinsic and or fa extrinsic factors may, be, may drive motivation. As students move from primary to secondary grades, motivation decreases. Individuals are said to be driven to act for extrinsic reasons when they anticipate some tangible payoff. Most students say they have been bored in school and feel unengaged at least half of the time. Students who are motivated to learn see a connection between learning their lives and their values and interests. When a student sees that the ideas are used, they may be more committed to learn as they feel respected in the class. With 21st century education for effective instruction to take place, student motivation is vitally important. Engaged in topics of interest, students become intrinsically motivated. Intrinsic motivation may increase creativity levels to those who normally have a lower creative um, level. Extrinsic motivation has been known to uh, positively affect the relationship between openness and experience and creativity. The research setting um, was a public high school in middle class suburb in Los Angeles County. The population of the county, uh, which was 14.65 square miles suburb, um, was 85,000 in 2010. The income was 65,000, and the population, uh, mainly Hispanic Latino, not Hispanic, uh, 1.3. The same goes for African American, um, American Indian, 3.8, Asian, and 0.1 of Native American and other. The participants in this uh, research were 12th grade college placement economics class. There were 23 students, 13 were female and 10 were male. Two students were ELL learners and two had IEPs. 
the grade distribution at the end of the first semester um, was clearly B's and F's and middle of the road we had a few C's and then were C minus, C pluses and a very uh, low on the higher grades of A's and B's. The roles of the researchers, researcher one was the intervention expert. She gathered demographic data, created intervention resources and administered the intervention collected student journals and responded to student input and collected student work. Researchers two and three, which was myself and Cynthia, um, were the data analysis experts and we deciphered the surveys, analyzed the collection data to make conclusions. The intervention plan itself uh, was collaborative mini economic uh, economy created that simulated a real world economies to learn basic economics, mathematics, and English language art skills. Upon receiving consent forms from the students, they would receive a $5 pay bonus that they could use for water breaks or restroom passes. An economics pretest, a self-esteem survey, and a survey of student choice of three instructional methods were given. Each student filled out an application for a job that they were inside, that they were um, assigned and it included a personal director, a senior manager, and a bank manager. All students were employed throughout the entire invention or intervention, excuse me. Um, they earned money for job performance. They all had a job in the classroom. They applied for it, they got paid for it. And with um, the money that they were paid, they had to pay their bills, just like their mother and father do. And they could buy things at our auction and they could also lose money as well. The inquiry data we collected was from the Sorensen self-esteem survey to determine a level of self-esteem and survey to determine what students found motivating, including their likes and dislikes regarding learning, including intrinsic and extrinsic motivational topics, and it included a self-assessment, choice, and autonomy. The artifacts data is where students collected um, traditional grading and evaluating methods of work that you see here. They included a bank account, records, and store records from sales. They also had daily journals that they recorded their participation, their struggles, and their ideas for improvement for themselves. The observational data was a pre-assessment in an economics con concepts that they already knew, a post-assessment for what they learned, attendance was a factor, and grades on assessments. The ethical research practices uh, followed to maintain validity and focus outcome on student success by using the reflective journals. Truth validity was used to observe students working on classroom business or service and job application or completion. Applicability and transferability was used um, as a collaborative project was merging the real world scenarios and had to be applied across the cur curriculum. Students participated in peer discussions and regarded outcomes of their work. Uh, de de excuse me, democratic validity was used um, as peer debriefing and participants and researcher one discussed data interpretations and member checks or respondent validation gave participants a voice to express the accuracy of the research. We found um, in our research that student engagement and motivation did increase as a result of students deciding which instructional methods that they learn best. 44% were you preferred working in groups on activities, 33% preferred interactive lex lectures, Cornell notes, and quiet time were the least favorite, which doesn't shock me. Self-esteem survey showed that 63.2% had moderately low self-esteem at the beginning. Survey one, motivation for success in economics, 96% of the students agreed or strongly disagreed to statements of what motivates them. And student journals, motivation level recorded daily based on a one to five scale. Day one, 52% rated intrinsic motivation level with a four or five. Students enjoyed the activities that were connected to the real world and choosing their own jobs. Day two, we had 17 and 33% were fives and fours. Uh, the lower levels, 28 and 22% were caused by a dislike for math and stress due to connection to the real world. Students ranking two and three scored severely low on their self-esteem survey as well. Day three, 26% uh, have uh, scored fives, 58 fours, 11% three, and 5% two. 
intrinsic motivation due to a hands-on lesson, understanding how to write checks and balance checkbooks were a factor, and the result of eating marshmallows in their hands-on hands -on lesson that was prepared for that day. Day four, 31% um, had fives, 50% had fours. Intrinsic motivation level was a result of poster making and hands-on activity, and extrinsic motivator was a result of the day's silent auction. Day five interactive day included two quizzes and a market act, market day activity. Highest levels of motivation included 42% five, uh, 40, another 42% for fours and 16% of threes. Extrinsic motivator included bonus for money for perfect score on a quiz and students were intrinsically motivated because they enjoyed the day's activities. Day six class dis discussion included receiving scoring rubric for their self-esteem tests and as a result, motivation level dropped significantly. Their microeconomics pretest, um, their class average was 51%. Their post-test, their class average was 68. And it increased, was an increase of 85% of the student scores. Quiz one, the class average was 46%, and quiz two, it was 70%. Overall grades prior to the intervention, as I stated before, um, the post-intervention grades went up we had a 1A, 5Bs, 1B minus, 2C pluses, 5Cs, 1C minus, 2D, 1D um, minus, and 4Fs. Absences during the intervention were very low. Students were on time to class, and extrinsic motivators was a fine pay for tardies. The conclusion was that increase in student engagement was observed by researcher one, increase in motivation to work as students found project interesting and practical. Student engagement and motivation had a positive effect on academic achievement. Absenteeism decreased. Low self-esteem resulted in low student motivation levels when the student realized that they scored low on self-esteem assessment. And there's no direct correlation that was established between self-esteem and student achievement. Recommended recommendations for further research, applying the intervention for a longer period than two weeks, applying the research to a larger group, um, ascertain if a direct correlation between self-esteem and low motivation exists, apply the same intervention with different real-world situations which could be used in a class other than economics. And here we have our researches, our references here. And that's it. Okay, stop.